what I like to talk about is the, is the delivery. So you, at the moment, you're using Adeno associated viruses, which are some kind of benign virus, which I, I guess you you edit the genetics for, for, and then it delivers that. It it gets into the cell and then generates the protein. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how that about that process? How, how does that actually work? So we're so it's not really a virus anymore. By the time we've done our synthetic biology, that's just the protein capsid. Uh, it's a very simple protein capsid. Uh, it's a very small virus. It only it only has only can contain about four point seven thousand base pairs of either viral material, which we're not using, or some new payload, which we are using, which is usually one gene, could be a, a couple. Um, so if you want to introduce <coughs> multiple genes, then, then you have to have mul multiple separate packages. Now that mm. can be solved by having bigger virus or um, having non-viral packages. We're exploring many different ways of doing this. Um, and, and the way it works is, is that rather than in reinventing the wheel from scratch, where we say, oh, these are the, the chemical decorations we would put on the outside of our nucleic acid to make it home towards the brain or towards, you know, astrocytes or liver or whatever, is uh, that we take viruses which have, have evolved over, you know, vast periods of time to, to target certain um, species and certain um, organs. Uh, and, then we can, and then we can also do our own evolution, sort of accelerated lab evolution, um, to, to find new recipes for coding the viruses um, that take advantage of the multiplicity and regular spacing, so typically around 60 different copies of whatever you put in. Um, so that it will home to to uh, to different tissues or home to all the tissues, so we can engineer it to be more promiscuous or more specific. Mm -hmm. And and we've done this. We spun off a company called Dino Therapeutics that uses these large designer libraries and machine learning to find out what the rules are for you know in, uh, picking tissue types, so tissue tropism as well as immune evasion. Right. Again, these are not viruses. These are just capsids that include a payload. The one hundred percent of the payload is essentially your favorite genes. Right. And and these are injected. Is that you inject them into the blood, or they are? They can be injected into the blood, into the uh, muscles, into the retina, um, uh, intrathecally, into the you know cerebral spinal fluid. Um, and in principle, you know, by abrasion or nano needles onto the skin, <clears throat> and even possibly uh, orally, if you can protect them from all the processes until they get um, into the in intestine. There are there is a, a growing number of dr drugs that that are by orally available. Um, that I, I don't think that's a top priority for the AV. Uh, vector researchers right at the moment, but it could be. Right. Because so you. All of these methods are, are available, yeah, in principle. Right. Good. Uh, yeah, understood. Because you would think that if it was something that you don't have to do often, that actually having an injection wouldn't be that bad. I mean, it, if you have to do it every day, then having an injection isn't going to work, but. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you inject, yeah, if you inject it in, in such a way that it goes through the entire blood system, it's a good way, of, it's an amazing way of delivery because. Essentially, every cell in your body is within about 60 micrometers of, of a capillary of your blood. It does have to cross that barrier, though, and some of the capillaries are really quite tight. Um, but the, the fact is that, that uh, certain viruses like AAV will cross that, that blood barrier to either blood brain or blood mm. intestine or just in general. Right. So one kind of last question in this area. So I, I believe you said that it, this uh, therapy does not alter the genome of the host, right? It, so the, the virus, so how, do, how does it actually generate the, the protein? Is it using the virus, R, well, the capsid RNA 
and and if so how long will that stay around in the cell so uh so these viruses can uh integrate into the genome it depends on how they're set up uh, mm. um or they can form an honorary member of the genome. They, they, they go from the single, the virus, the AAV that we use is single-stranded DNA, and it becomes double-stranded DNA inside the cell. And it is, for the most part, non-integrated, but it could still persist. Uh, and most of the tissues in your body are, are called post-mitotic or non-mitotic. They, they're not dividing. Um, and so, um, so the, so the, vir the, the, the payload, the, the, the DNA, or RNA payload you have doesn't have to divide. Now, um, DNA is a good, um, double-stranded DNA is a good endpoint because it's stable, and it, you can produce RNA from it, and so you basically have an endless resource of the RNA, and it, and it could last for the rest of your life, uh, yeah. quite, quite possibly. Um, we're getting better at identifying parts of the genome where you can integrate things without consequence, these are called safe harbors, and mm -hmm. we've now found, I don't know, about 7,000 uh, candidates in my lab. Um, and so we're, we're harnessing recombination machinery to, to specifically target those um, so that you get efficient integration into those sites that we've determined not only are safe for the cell, meaning they don't cause cell death or cancer, but they're also safe for the payload in that it doesn't get silenced. You want it to stay active. Um, right. Uh, so, so anyway, that, that's safe harbors, I think, is something we'll be hearing more and more about uh, in the future. Okay, that's, yeah, no, that's really interesting. So you, you kind of talked about this, I think, already. Uh, taking the AAVs and, and almost like creating your own versions of them creating your own version of these capsids, these viruses. Yeah, how much progress have you made? And in what way are they kind of better than the natural ones? Well, so natural ones have, um, so we've made a lot of progress is the first <laughs> answer. And, and I'll illustrate that with the second, the answer to the second question. So uh, natural viruses uh, have the problem that uh, most humans have, have been exposed to them and you have an immune response, which means that if you have neutralizing antibodies to a, a particular AAV serotype, um, then that is a much less effective drug. It means you have to give a higher dose, which risks complications of you know, immune overreaction or um, you, you name it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's one of the problems with naturally. The other problem is they haven't necessarily evolved to do what we want them to do. So let's say we want them to treat uh, you know, dopaminergic neurons um, well, there may have never been an evolutionary reason for AAV to target those. Um, so we, we can target those very specifically uh, by um, engineering the part of the capsid that, that ha is associated with tissue tropism and doing kind of systematic survey. In fact, we can, what we've done is kind of do this all in, in a multiplex way, meaning that we can ask for multiple tissue tropisms in one experiment. So the experiment might be semi-expensive, uh, and so we want to get as much out of it as possible. So we make a big library where we've designed it as well as possible to cover a number of different tissues, inject it into the animal, mouse, or primate, and then cut out, uh, biopsy, all the different tissues you might later be interested in, and then measure the barcodes so that for each of the million or so viruses that we've designed and see which ones go where, and then use that as input to another round of machine learning and synthesis to make another million viruses and see where they go. And, and as you get better and better at it, each there should be some barcodes that you've now really optimized for a particular, for each particular cell type all, all at once. So, so as, in as little as a couple of uh, animals, you can get to, um, Potentially hundreds of different uh, targeting um, protocols, sequences, oh. uh, viral sequences, capsid sequences. Right. Okay, that's really interesting. So, on the the dog experiment that you you spoke about, um, rejuvenate rejuvenate bio, right, is, is the company that's running that. Um, yeah. could, could you just share uh, kind of where is that at the moment, and uh, kind of what is the next steps? to like extending to human? 
Right. So, uh, so uh, gene therapies are a little different from some small molecules in that the genes and their pro protein products vary a little bit from species to species. So, mm. let's say our goal is to make a hormone. It's it, the hormone and the hormone receptor may have drifted a little bit going along mm. the two branches of the phylogenetic tree from our common ancestor. And so we want, might want to tweak it a little bit. So we, in some uh, FDA-approved drugs, the, the goal is to use exactly the same formulation in animals mm. and humans. Here we have to change them, and this is especially true for editing. But, but anyway, we're just doing uh, additions. We're adding genes that, we want, that are, um, that's, some of them go down with age. We want mm. to just boost them back up a little bit. So they're not foreign proteins. They're... Um, they're, go they're going to be with you uh, for life, probably, for the rest of your life. And so that's good. It's not, they're not foreign. They won't be immune rejected. Um, and we're just uh, uh, boosting them back up. Right. Excellent. Thank you. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.